In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the SolidWorks mold making tools, really in this case just the cavity, and most of it's just manual creation of a cavity and a core. And this is actually the earliest method that used to be able to use inside SolidWorks. And the thing is, is that it's always tried and true virtually always works. So I'm going to go through this and then I will go through the next exercise where I show you the new tools that are inside SolidWorks for creating this cavity, which are intended to simplify and, and speed up the process. As you can see with this exercise, that there's a uh, there's the core and the cavity. There's also a core pin. Obviously the core pin doesn't have the little sleeve on the top there to lock it in, but it was, it's just an example that I just created, so it's not exactly to spec as it would be in real life. But we're going to go ahead and take this mouse cover and create this. So I'm going to start over from scratch here. And what you're going to want to do is if you go to the uh, mold design web page on Britannia 1, uh, what you're going to want to do is find the uh, part files for exercise 3 through 7. This actually is exercise 3 that we're working on. So when you click on that, it should automatically bring you to this area here. What you do is you just click up here to download, and it will take a minute to download them. And what we're looking for is lesson 1, and so it should come up down below here. You just hit this little arrow. Now I'm using uh, Chrome, Google Chrome, and so it comes up this way. The other browsers are a little bit different but uh, generally about the same thing. And they usually drop these into your download directory, so they're easy to find. Exercises that are there, you just double click on lesson one, find the mouse cover, right click, copy, and then right click on your desktop and paste it there. That's probably the easiest place to put it, or put it someplace where you know you're gonna be able to find it easily. Notice it's an XB, which is a parasol binary file. So that's a, a, a neutral file format. Actually, for parasol systems, it's uh, the core modeler or the uh, kernel. So, what we do then, you just go to File, Open, and you could go ahead and open up the mouse cover. When you go to Open, actually, most likely you're going to go over here to Parasolid and find Parasolid on that list. And then you'll see the mouse cover XB. Go ahead and open it up. It's going to ask you, do you want to run import diagnostics? Um, in this case, you don't have to because actually this file is a very clean translation. It is directly from SOLIDWORKS. So um, you don't have to. So just I would just hit no. And then if you get this option, feature recognition, um, again, just hit no. But in, if you were really creating these parts uh, for a mold, you might actually want to run through both of those. But in this case, we don't need to. And I would also recommend over here in the display style, set it to uh, shaded with edges, just so you can see the edges a little bit. Now, in exercise one, we actually learned how to put draft on the part and things like that. And this one, we're not going to go through adding draft. This would need, would most likely require draft in some of these sections. So um, we're not going to bother with doing that right now because we've already gone through that lesson. But we want to go ahead and make a uh, mold for this. So using the old method, we just go to file and make assembly from part. And uh, go ahead and save and insert. You can just save it to your desktop. And just hit the green check mark and it should drop it in at the origin. Now what we need to do is under, under insert component, hit the little arrow, go to new part, select the underside face here for the parting line. And now you could go ahead and just go to the view orientation up here, to the top view. And let's put in a rectangle. Just make sure the rectangle encloses the entire part. I'm not going to worry about putting the dimensions in. If you want to put them in, you're more than welcome to. Uh, just some basic dimensions here of 4.25 by 5.5. Let's say that's about it. And then you could center it if you like. I'm not going to bother doing that right now. I'm just going to go to Features and extrude that, and then extrude up into the part here, approximately 1.5 inches. Again, you'll probably want to make room for your cooling lines. Hit the green check mark. Flip it around the back side, and now we could go to Insert up at the top here, Molds, and Find Cavity. 
Now you have the ability to scale around the parameters. Again, this is an exercise too. I'm not going to go through all those features. Just go ahead and click on the import mouse cover. If you can't select it from there, hit this little plus symbol up here and find the mouse cover and select it. Hit the green check. Okay, now it should have made the cavity, and in fact, I'm just going, you could edit the part right here if you like, I'm in edit component mode. I'm actually going to hide the mouse cover, I'm going to stay inside the assembly, so I'm just going to click on this and hide the component, which is the mouse cover, <coughs> and continue to work on my mold part here. You can actually see it's, it's uh, inside, the cavity is there already, and core. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and grab that core side. We could create the cavity as well, but I'll just stick with the core. Here's one way. You could right click on the surface, go to the beach ball, and for that face, click on it. Over here, make sure you click on the advanced tab, and under illumination, grab the transparency, and just drag it over maybe about halfway. What we can do with this is we can see the cavity, and what we want to do is just select it actually, since it's in transparent mode, we can select it and start a sketch, and we can just go ahead and hit convert entities on that surface while that surface is selected. And we'll separate these three holes from the cavity. Thus, it, we'll let's see what happens here. We'll go to features, extrude boss base, flip the direction. You can just put through all and hit the green check. Now in this case, I accidentally selected extrude boss space. That was not the intention there. That's an accident. So let's go back there. Let's just delete that. But I do want to take that sketch and go to extrude cut. That was the intention. Through all and hit the green check. Now what happens here is you have the ability to select bodies because those three holes were connecting the top part to the core. And so if you hit select bodies, find body two, most likely it turns blue like you can see here. That's the core, and that's what we want to salvage here. We don't really care about the cavity on the top. We'll, do, we'll deal with that in just a moment. So you can just go ahead and hit OK, and now you can see the core is exposed. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually display that sketch. Again, that sketch one, I'm going to right click and hit the show, which is that little pair of eyeglasses. Because now I'm going to go ahead and select this face on the bottom, start a sketch, then right click on one of the edges of this border, and we'll find select chain, and hit convert entities. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click on that sketch again, and just hide it. But now I could extrude this, I could go to features, extrude boss base, and again, give yourself enough room for the cooling lines or anything else you might need there. I'm just going to make it one inch thick. Hit the green check mark. And we're in good shape. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off at a component. Because as far as I'm concerned with this, we're, we're done. If you want to make additional cord inserts, this is where you can do it. I'm going to show you how to make one. So you can see how that's done just a couple minutes here. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to just take and do the same thing we did with exercise two with this. And we go under insert component, new part, select this face right here, select that face again, and hit convert entities to steal the outer edges. So we don't have to redraw that. Go to features and extrude boss base. And again, uh, give it enough space for your um, for any cooling lines that you might need or any additional features, and then just build it right on top. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the mouse cover back. I'm just going to click on Show Component, right click and Show Component. And now I want to go ahead and subtract these two parts from this. Again, just mimicking what we did in Exercise 2. So it's really nothing particularly new. In this case, though, we did have to separate some open holes. If you remember in Exercise 2, actually in Exercise 1, we prepped the part where we, we uh, removed all the holes. So it was very easy to split the cavity of the core. Anyhow, so let's go now and we're going to go to Insert and Molds and Cavity. And the design components will select from the feature tree up here. Just select the mouse cover and the this part here, you might have to click on it a couple times until it shows up in the tree. And hit the green check mark to apply. 
now if we could go to the turn off edit components here and we could go to exploded view select this part here drag it up oops just make sure the mouse cover is not part of that let's grab that little manipulator handle there click on this part here drag it down and you can see we have our two halves now if you want to make a core pin uh, I'm going to show you how to turn that into core pin right there now you can do it using configurations later in this book the very last second last lesson I believe uh, we can go through how to use configurations when designing a mold. Now, be aware molds are extraordinarily complex. Configurations aren't always the best method. It almost gets a little too confusing from time to time. So you might want to just do what I did here where we just keep making additional parts. It's easier to understand on the feature tree. But if there's a couple parts that are very simple, maybe not a bad idea to do what I'm about to show you. I'm going to open up this, uh, let me just hit the little check mark here. I'm going to click collapse. I'm going to open up this part. Okay, we're in, we're in the part file for that. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select, um, actually I'm going to make a configuration. To make a configuration, you click on this little tab and right click at the top here of the tree and add configuration. And we'll just call this core pin. Now we select this face here and start a sketch. I'm going to actually select this edge and just convert that edge so it projects the edge onto the surface that we're sketching. Now I could go to Features, Extruded Cut, and I'm going to select Through All, but I'm going to select Flip Side to Cut where it cuts everything on the outside. I know that seems scary right there, but go ahead and watch what happens. So I went ahead and did that. Now we have our core pin. Now what you'll notice here, if you double click on the de default, it brings back the entire cavity. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reverse that process. We're going to create um, for the default. You could leave the default as is. It's probably not a bad idea to keep an original of it and then kind of chop this up. Uh, in fact, I'll do that. I'm going to create a new configuration. And I'm going to call it the cavity. And now all I do again is select that face, start a sketch, select the edge, convert the entities, go to features, extrude cut, through all, and in this case we don't hit the flip direction. So now we have our hole. And you could do this too. You could select this face, sketch, and create the counter bore that goes in there. Okay, if you want to put a dimension on it, we'll just make that 0.4. And then we'll give it a depth of 0.2. Okay, now I go to the core pin. And I could select that face there, start a sketch, and draw that same diameter in. In fact, uh, rather than drawing it in, here's a better method so that they're all tied together. So if you change one, the other will update. Go to your feature tree, and you'll see these two features are suppressed. In theory, the last feature should have contained that sketch. So you should be able to just click on it and hit Convert Entities and convert those edges. Now we just go to Features. Extrude boss base, flip the direction we know it was 0.2, and then there it is. And now we could go back to the assembly, and you'll see that we have that top part there. We're going to go ahead and right click on it, and you sh we should be able to go to component properties here if you right click and you'll see the several configurations we made. In this case we want the cavity configuration there. Now we could insert an additional part that part there. We could just uh, hold control and grab this part six and drag it in. Release control as soon as you drag it in. Now right click on that 
part and go to component properties and select core pin hit OK and now we just will use the mate tool we just do edge to edge here oops let's undo that this edge to this edge hit apply and then we'll go ahead and explode that again let's go to the uh, right click explode and if we want we could edit that explode or we could create a new explode and you can see we have the core pin inside there so if we wanted to re-explode these I'll select both of these drag them up drag this down if you want to see the core pin grab that drag it up and now if we animate it speed up a little bit and there it is and that concludes exercise 10